All right, so let's do a example problem using a really straightforward and simple second degree polynomial uh, for definite integrals. So we can start to see how these things work in practice. Now, if you're kind of shaky or unfamiliar with the difference between definite and indefinite integrals, which is just basically saying the difference between definite integrals and antiderivatives, I've already got a video uh, up on this playlist on my channel uh, under the calculus, Calc 1 uh, integrals playlist on my channel called Integrals Definite Versus Indefinite or something something along those lines that gives you the mathematical basis of the calculus behind definite versus indefinite integrals, uh, what an antiderivative is and, and uh, how that differs from a definite integral. So quick recap on definite integrals here for the purposes of this. A definite integral is just an integral over a to b. We're evaluating some function over the interval a to b and we're going to get out a value of area. All right, let's write that. We can read it. All right, area. Now, what does this mean? On a graph, this just means that we have a graph of some function. That's not working, is it? We have a graph of some function, and we have points A and B, and we want to see what's this area in here, in this little shaded region how much space is there in there? And I'll, uh, I'll put a conceptual video up about how this works and why we know we have no margin of error there, but that's all this is really asking. So this is a definite integral. This is our, our definition of what it does, basically, if we want to be really simple about things. So let's go ahead and look at the, uh, the steps that we need to take. So the first step, and we'll refer back to this page, the first step to do this is to go ahead and take your indefinite integral, or another way to say this is just take your antiderivative. And our second step here is going to be substitute values in. And we'll get into the specifics of what I actually mean by that in a sec. And then our third step is going to be setting equal to solve and we'll talk about the specifics of all of these in a second okay great so let's look at the problem we're actually going to be evaluating here so let's evaluate the definite integral over let's say uh, 3 to 4 of x squared plus x minus 2 dx. Okay, so here's what we're going to be evaluating. So, he said our first step was to take the indefinite integral or the antiderivative. So let's go ahead and take the antiderivative of this. We're taking the antiderivative of this part right here, of course. So, how do we do this? What do we need to do? Well, this first thing here, this is a little exponent, x squared. Now, how are we going to do this? Well, there's this really neat little rule that's going to help us out that says, and we'll put this over here in our arsenal of knowledge on the right, that says the definite integral, the in, no, I'm sorry, not the definite, the indefinite integral of x to the nth power dx is simply equal to, and this is crazy cool, x to the n minus 1 power over just n minus 1. That's it. That's all you have to do. So look how easy this is going to be. x squared. Hmm, okay, n minus 1, it's the nth power here is 2, so when we're raising this to x to the n minus 1, n minus 1, we're just going to end up with x cubed, right? Not n minus 1, oh man, what am I talking about? n plus 1, come on, you can't listen to me. n plus 1, so we're going to get x cubed over 3, and then we have this x here, well, what is x? x is just x to the first power, right? So we still have this rule of x to the n plus 1, so we're going to end up with x squared, 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1, which is, you know, n plus 1, which is going to be 2. So x cubed over 3 plus x squared over 2. And then this negative 2 here, well, that's just going to be negative 2x. Because we know when we take the derivative of negative 2x prime, this is just a constant times a function rule, which is going to be the constant times the... Uh, d derivative of the function, and the derivative of this function, just x here, is always just 1, so it's 2 times 1, or just 2. So that's where we're getting that from. 
So this is the antiderivative of uh, x squared plus x minus 2. So we have all the information we need for step 1. Step 1 is taken care of. We have our indefinite integral. So we'll go ahead and put this around it here. But, yeah, all right, we've got our indefinite integral. What do we do now? Well, we've got our lower bound and our upper bound, right? We've got 3. Man, I hate this highlighter. All right, we've got 3 and we've got 4. So this is our... Uh, I shouldn't be saying lower bound. This is our uh, lower limit of integration right here. And this is our upper limit of integration. Let's, this is really just distracting, so let's get rid of that. Okay, and so what we need to do is we need to go in, and everywhere we see an x in this equation, we're going to plug in our lower limit of integration. Then we're going to go back, and wherever we see an x, we're going to plug in our upper limit of integration. So we're just going to do this for each value, and then we're going to get those two values and set them equal. So when we say substitute the values, that's what I mean by that, is just we're going in and substituting uh, the limits of integration here. So let's go ahead and get started in doing that. So uh, we have, let's do 3 first. We have 3 cubed over 3 plus 3 squared over 2 minus 2 times 3. And I'm assuming that you're just going to have a scientific calculator and be able to do this in your head pretty quickly. So this is just all going to, this right here is just going to be 15 over 2. So we've got that. Now let's let's kill all of this. Let's erase this. We don't really need it. Uh, and just keep our value in our head and put it over here on the right. So 15 over 2 is going to be from our lower limit. So we'll just have LL equals 15 over 2. Okay, that's great. So we have that knowledge. Now let's go ahead and do uh, our upper limit of integration here, which is 4. So we're going to have 4 cubed over 3. Ugh, 43, come on, I can't write. 4 cubed over 3 plus 4 squared over 2 minus 2 times 4. And we're going to wind up and we evaluate this at 64 thirds. Okay. So we have our upper limit over here at 64 over 3. So now that we have our upper limits uh, and our lower limit of integration, this is right here is all the information we need to continue from this point. We don't even really care about this anymore. We don't, even, we don't need any of it. All we need is uh, what I just have uh, boxed in with that little highlight there. So let's take this information, and now number two is done. We've substituted our values. Let's go on to number three, setting things equal and solving. Uh, well, I said set equal, and I really have no idea why on earth I said set equal. We're going to subtract things. I, I must be on another planet here. We're going to subtract. Hopefully some of you all caught that <laughs> heading up to this point. So we're going to subtract our upper limit minus the lower limit to get the integral of the value of area. So let's uh, let's do that now. So we have our upper limit, we said was 64 over 3, so we're just going to have 64 over 3 minus, I think it was 15 over 2, is that correct? Uh, yep, 15 over 2. And this is equal to 83 sixths. Now that's just kind of ugly. Who cares about that? You know, we don't. It doesn't really tell us much. But let's do a decimal approximation. We'll say 83 sixth is roughly equivalent to uh, 13.83 repeating. And so we have this approximate value. And remember, what is this telling us? Well, I, I can't tell you off the top of my head what this function looks like. But let's just pretend it looks like this. Here is three. Here is four. It means that right here, this is 13.83 repeating units squared of area. So that's all this means. So to do a quick recap of our steps now that our subtraction is taken care of, uh, that I inappropriately said setting equal to earlier, um, 
what we did was we uh, we took the antiderivative of our original function, this thing right here, the x squared plus x minus two, and then we substituted our values from our lower and upper bound uh, upper limit of integration into it, and we got our lower and upper limit of integration. And then we took those things and we subtracted them from each other, and we got 83 over six, which was about 13.83 uh, when we did a decimal approximation, which told us how much area was in the specified part of the curve of the function of x squared plus x minus 2 between 3 and 4. So that's all there is to it.